Hi and welcome to the WinStack Getting Started Quickly training video. Our plan is to highlight the capabilities of the WinStack system to acquaint you with easy steps to input and maintain your tenant data and then to generate color-coded stacking plans that look professional, are informative, and eye-popping. When you initially launch the WinStack system, you'll be prompted for a login name. You can change the default login to something different so that you can create user preferences for where your data files will be stored. Under the File User Preferences command, you can designate where your configuration or template files are located, as well as your data files. To create a stacking plan after you've input the tenant data, click on the Print Preview icon with the glasses on it. Then click Areas and OK. A list of possible errors will be displayed, but in most cases you can click Continue to display the stacking plan. It's that easy. Click to zoom in or right click to zoom out. Now as I zoomed in, everything that you see here can be easily changed by you and also you could save those changes in what's called a template or configuration file for use for other properties. In this particular case we have uh, tenants on different floors. The tenants are different sizes uh, based on the tenant square footage. All the sizing is done automatically. Uh, the tenants are different colors based on the expiration year. In this particular case, we have different colors for different years of expiration. And you can see that in the legend section uh, at the bottom or the footer section. In this example, we're showing the name of the tenant and the expiration date within the tenant boxes. Everything that you see here can be easily changed by you. We could add uh, other information within the tenant boxes. We could change what we have up here in the header section. We could add other columns on the left or the right hand area. So let's talk about how you can do some of that. Up at the top we have a, an icon say, uh, that says building configure and this is where you have the name of the building. So once you have your tenant information in that spreadsheet you would go to the building command to enter in the name of the building and we'll just call this training, training towers. Also below that we have a list of the floor names. It's easy enough for you to just change the floor name to be whatever you want. The system is also keeping track of the number of tenants that you have on each of the square footage for the tenants on each floor as well as the number of tenants. At this point I'm just going to click OK and notice what happens to the the name of the, the building up here in the header section once I click on OK. It just changes uh, the name of the building. The text within the tenant box is uh, controlled with this chart space form. And in this particular window that we're displaying uh, we're showing what's displayed for each tenant in the upper right hand section is um, what's actually being displayed as well as the font that's being used. And in the upper left hand area is a list of all the items that you can display if you want. Okay, If we want to show something like the, uh, the suite number or the square footage I can just uh, scroll down to area total or square feet. I'm going to double left click it brings it up to the upper right hand area. The font notice is different than what I had before so I'm going to change the font. So all I need to do is highlight the item that I want to change, click on the font button and then change it to be 8. Now I'm not limited to Arial. You can have any uh, font that you want that's on your computer. I can make it bold or italicized. I can even have a different color of the, the text within the tenant boxes. Now uh, these colors apply to all the tenants, but uh, on the class on Thursday we'll show you other things that can be done. I'm going to click OK. And now I have a number here, 1899, but I really don't know what that number represents. So we do have the ability to put in a label either before or after the value. In this particular case I want to put a label afterwards. I'm going to put a space and then SF for square feet. Notice for the lease end date, it has a label of ends. 
I just clicked on the send and notice we have a label up here called ends. Okay. Right now we are displaying the tenant uh, information in the middle of the tenant box. If I wanted to where it says item placement, I can move or click on some of the radio buttons here to move it to the lower left hand corner or lower right or back in the middle. So all the information doesn't have to be in the very middle of the tenant box in this particular case, like in this case, <coughs> I have it um, uh, in the middle, but it could be in different corners as well. If we want to see this, I'm going to click on OK. And notice that now all the tenants are displaying the square footage on the third line in each of the tenant boxes. I'm going to come back here to Chart Space Form. Now this information can also be on, on uh, the same line. If I want my square footage and my lease end date to be on the same line, I can just highlight um, um, the item that I want. And then where it says item placement, I can click where it says with previous and put a couple spaces in between them to separate them. And now I have the lease end date and the square footage on the same line. If I click OK, notice that for these tenants it's showing the, the expiration date <coughs> and the square footage on the same line. Let's just put it back um, to three lines. So I'm going to undo the with previous. And that's it. If I click OK, we're back to what we had before. Now, as you make these changes on uh, your stacking plan, that you can save these uh, changes as a template. And that would be done with this icon at the top uh, with C with a down arrow. I'm going to load some other templates right now. Notice that uh, in this particular example, I just have a column on the left-hand side showing the floor name and on the right-hand side the floor square footage. Um, WinStack comes with quite a few different uh, predefined templates. I actually have more here than you would normally have. but. Um, if I wanted to, I can scroll to the bottom, and, and a popular one is this vacancy occupancy on the right side. So I can load that particular template. And now um, I have additional columns on the right-hand side showing the number of square feet that are occupied, vacant, and then the total. I can uh, load other templates. I'm going to click on C with an up arrow. There's one called Vacancy Occupancy Expiring 10 Years. So I can load that one. And notice now I have a table at the bottom showing the number of square feet that expire year by year with the percent that rolls over year by year. So you can load these templates. You, you can create these different templates to suit your particular needs and load these templates on all your different properties to come up with a consistent format um, that makes it just very quick and easy to do. I'm going to click on C with an up arrow. Let's go back to our class default one over here. And this is pretty much what we started with, with uh, a, a column on the right hand side showing um, the, the square footage. You notice I still in the header section have the, the name of the building, Training Towers. All the color coding is controlled with what we call Query Configure. And on this particular screen, you have different sections. And we'll be going into much more detail about uh, this on Thursday. But the active queries, in other words, the active color coding instructions are down here to the bottom. And like on line number one, I'm saying that if the lease end date equals 2010, then I'm assigning it to something called frame number two. And if I double left click on frame number two, Notice it brings up a palette of color, and the one that's highlighted is a light blue. <laughs> so this is the color that is being assigned to all those leases that expire in 2010. You're not limited to these colors. You can have most any color under the rainbow. You can even have patterns. And you can add as many other colors as you want. And that's done with this Edit Frame button up here. And we'll be talking about that on Thursday. 
Those leases that expire in 2011 are assigned to frame number one, which is the screen color. If I want to change that color to something else, you know, I can just scroll down to a different section. Uh, maybe we want it to, to be this um, yellowish color. I'm just going to double left click on 20. And if I click OK, then notice all those leases that expire in 2011 now have this um, um, tannish uh, color. Okay. Now these uh, the color coding instructions don't have to be based on expiration year. They could be based on any criteria that you want. So it could be based on uh, the type of tenant it is. It could be based on uh, the square footage of the tenant. In other words, you could set up ranges of square footage with different colors. Uh, you could um, uh, it base it on maybe the status. In other words, what we're really saying is that all those um, tenants that have a status of vacant are going to be a reddish color. You can even base it on the name of the tenant. In other words, if I wanted to, I have a tenant over here called Maxim. Okay. I can come over here to the query section. I can you build the queries here at the top, but I can say if the name of the tenant equals max, and it doesn't even have to be the whole name. It could be just a partial name, and I'm saying it's not case sensitive, and I want that to be, uh, let's just have it this color, and we'll call it maxim. And I'm going to add this to the bottom. So now I have a new color coding instruction that says if the tenant name equals max, then assign it to that particular color. Okay, so if I click OK, notice maxima now is that color. Okay. You also have the ability to disable some of these queries. So uh, if I want to disable this one that I just uh, created, I could just click here where it says yes, now it's disabled. If I click OK, then Maxim goes back to the color that we had before for the expiration year. So we have different buttons. Uh, the building configure allows you to change the name of the, uh, the building. You can also put in address information, which would then be displayed typically in the header section of your stacking plan. You can change the name of the, uh, the floors. If I want my first floor to be ground, a second floor could be mezzanine. You can also have floors that are below the ground level. That could be like zero or minus one, minus two, and so on. But I'm going to just click OK. And now notice in the lower left-hand area that uh, my floor number one is really called ground. So we've talked about the color coding instructions with the query. We've talked about the chart space form, which allows you to change the text within the tenant boxes. And all the formatting is really controlled with this configure chart section where we have different sections. We won't go into this uh, uh, very much today. We'll do that on Thursday. But we have different uh, sections like header that controls the, the top of the stacking plan. The footer controls the bottom part of the stacking plan. Floors control the columns on the left and the right hand side. And general in this particular case allows me to uh, maybe show uh, the number of square feet that expire year by year. Maybe I want to see the percent that rolls over year by year with one decimal place. And if I click OK, notice at the, the bottom, and I'll just scroll down for you. Now we have a little table that shows the number of square feet that expire year by year with the uh, decimal places or the percentage with one decimal place. If I want to see uh, the number of tenants that are in these different categories. I can come back here to configure chart, indicate that I want to see the number of spaces, click OK, and now I have uh, the number of spaces that are affected year by year. Now notice also that we have a couple years where we have no activity. 
if you want to have uh, a legend box for those um, those years, that's fine. Or if you want, I'm going to come back to configure charts. Indicate that I only want to show matching. In other words, I only want to show the legend boxes where I have some type of activity. So by checking this, if I click OK, now I'm not showing those uh, spaces where I didn't have any activity. And actually the stacking plan looks a little cleaner and looks a little bit better. Why don't we get into the actual process of entering tenant information into the, the stacking plan. But uh, once I've made these changes to the stacking plan, again, I can click on C with a down arrow and indicate that I want to uh, save this particular set of instructions as a template. I'm just going to call it uh, default 5. I'm going to call this the actual name of the file is 5. So those that have, uh, those of you who have multiple offices, you can create these templates and then email it to somebody else so they can be using it and come up with the same consistent format that you're using. So I'm going to save this particular template under class default 5. Now if I were to load some of these other templates, notice this is a, a totally different format than what I had before. But if I click on C with an up arrow and then go to the class default 5, that's the one that we were just working on, I have the same format that I had before. Okay, so you can see how these templates make it very easy to come up with, uh, very quickly come up with consistent formats uh, for the different stacking plans that, uh, that you might want. I'm going to click on, uh, once you have your stacking plan, you have the ability to obviously print the stacking plan to whatever printer you want. The system does come with a PDF writer, so if you don't have Acrobat or some other PDF writer, uh, you can contact us and we can just send you uh, the link to download uh, the PDF um, writer that comes with, with WinStack. You also have the ability to take this particular stacking plan and put it out to some type of image so you can bring that into PowerPoint or into um, uh, some other Windows type uh, application and we'll talk about this a little bit later on. Okay, but let's, uh, I'm going to click on close. We're back to the spreadsheet. Let's talk about how we actually enter intended information and you have three different ways of doing it. I'm just going to click on new right now. No, I don't want to save this particular stacking plan. Typically you would though. And I'm just going to use my default template to load a, um, a blank spreadsheet. Now the first way that uh, you enter tenant information is just to manually enter it. So I'm just going to say tenant uh, 1. I'm hitting the tab key to move the cursor to the right. We'll say it's in suite 100. Uh, he's on the first floor. I don't really care about the start date, but the ending date, let's assume is 1031 of uh, year 2011, and he occupies uh, 3,000 square feet. Okay, that's all you have to do for manually entering in the, the tenant information. Uh, I can uh, then come back here to uh, tenant number two, and I can say, well, you know, tenant number two, he's uh, suite 200, he's on the second floor. Maybe this lease expires in um, 9.30 of 12 and occupies 4,000 square feet. Okay. So you would just continue entering in your tenant information and that uh, then create the stacking plan. Uh, we have some shortcuts to make it a little bit easier to enter your tenant information. If you want to replicate a tenant, then you can just highlight that uh, tenant by clicking, left clicking on the uh, the number over here on the left hand side, or right clicking, and you can say add. Now notice that uh, over here on the toolbar, we also have some uh, icons that are the same. So uh, this icon for add row is the same as right clicking and indicating add. Now in this particular case, I want to replicate my tenant number two, and I want to replicate him maybe ten times. So what the system is going to do is take tenant number two and replicate it ten times. 
and then I can just quickly come down here and I'm just um, uh, changing the floor number and then going down arrow I want to just change the expiration date a, a little bit so it doesn't we don't have a, a boring stacking plan Let me come over here Oops. Just want we just uh, say 5,000. And actually, I'm going to highlight uh, those three rows, right click, say copy, and then I'm going to highlight these other rows, right click, and then paste that sequence in. So notice it's 345, 345, and so on. Okay, so I have my tenants over here. The next thing that you do is you click on building. We'll put in the name of the building. This is going to be our. Uh, training towers. Notice that if I scroll down the system is automatically assigned the floor names. It has summed up the square footage of the tenants on each floor and also given me the, the total of the tenants on each floor. If I had wanted to just like I did before I can just uh, double click on a floor name and change it to be ground or mezzanine or whatever I want. Okay. If I click OK, then I'm back to the spreadsheet. I would click on uh, Print Preview. I always want areas. Click OK. Now the system does give you some warnings um, if there are any problems. In our case, everything is fine. So I'm going to click on Continue. And here's our uh, information. Let me just come back and change something real fast. So So if I left click, notice that I have my tenants on each floor. Sometimes I have uh, multiple tenants on a floor. And in this particular format, uh, again, it's just pretty much what we had before, showing the number of uh, square feet on each floor. If I wanted to see some other information down here to the bottom, then I can come over to configure chart and then just check on these items that I want. I only want to show matching. Okay, so in this particular case, now I have, um, I'm showing the number of square feet that expire year by year with percentages. In this particular example, uh, our tenant number two up on the fifth floor uh, is white because I don't have um, uh, any color coding instructions for 2010. I'm just going to come back here to the spreadsheet. I would typically have that, but I'm just going to change the, uh, the expiration date here to be 12. So if I come back to the stacking plan, everything is fine. Okay, and then if I wanted to print this, I would just click on print and print it to whatever printer you want. Or if I wanted to put it uh, out to PowerPoint or something, I can click on image. You have the ability to put it out to a file as either a PNG or a Windows meta file or you could put it to the clipboard. I'm going to click on clipboard. You have some options. One of the options is a transparent background. So I'm just going to click here. And then I'm going to click OK. So it has taken this particular stacking plan and put it out to the clipboard. I can then get into something like Word. Right click and just paste it in. Okay. Now this is strictly an image, so you do have the ability to resize it to suit your particular needs. Actually, I should have uh, changed my page setup to be in a landscape mode. Actually, it was. Notice in this particular format over here on the right-hand side, the background color of um, of the PowerPoint uh, presentation is bleeding through because I use the transparent option up here. And we'll talk more about this on Thursday. Okay. 
So that's basically all that's involved with creating a stacking plan. You enter in your tenant information here, you come over to building, you put in the name of the building, you come over to print preview, you have your stacking plan. If you want to load a different format or a different template, you can click on C with an up arrow and then just load the template that you want to use. I'm just going to load this vacancy occupancy on the right side. And notice that we don't have any uh, vacant tenants over here. Actually, I'm going to click on close. And why don't we change the name of one of these tenants? So I'm just going to type in vacant. And notice um, we've set up a default that if the name of the tenant is vacant, then you get a little uh, frowning face over here. If I uh, come over here to print preview, now we have a vacant tenant up here on the seventh floor, and um, we show the number of square feet that are vacant for that uh, or occupied by that uh, that space. Okay. Anybody have any particular questions at this point? Now another way of um, getting your tenant data into WinStack is to copy paste the data from Excel. So I'm just going to come up with a blank spreadsheet right now. I'm going to click on New. No, I don't want to save this data. I'm going to use this default template. The, the templates are what controls the order of the columns that you have in your uh, spreadsheet. To do a copy-paste from uh, Excel, obviously the columns have to be in the same order. So notice that I have my the name of the tenant. I have my suite number, the floor number, and so on. To get this uh, data from Excel into WinStack, all you do is highlight the columns that you want. And you can do one or two columns at a time and then paste it in, or all of them. It's a lot easier you know, if the, the columns are in the right order, so you can just do all the columns. I'm going to right click and copy this to the clipboard. I'm going to get into WinStack. I'm going to click on the first cell up here, and I, I want you all to write this down right now. If you're going to be copy-pasting data from an outside system, then what you do is you press the Alt key on the keyboard, and notice what happens to this icon to the left of the flashlight. It now becomes active. Okay, so I'm pressing the Alt key down, I'm pressing the Paste button, I have all my tenant information in. I would go to building. We'll call this um, Excel uh, Tower. And I click on print preview. And here's my stacking plan. Notice that uh, the tenants are on different um, uh, floors. There are different size boxes based on the tenant square footage. There are different colors based on the expiration year. Now I don't have that table at the bottom because I didn't set up the instructions for doing that, but I could come over here to configure chart and just turn on these buttons over here. We'll only show matching. So now I'm showing the number of square feet that expire year by year with the percentages. So that's it. That's all that needs to be done to get data from Excel into WinStack. So some of you might be um, getting your tenant information from a property management system. You know, most of the systems now have the ability to export tenant information out to a spreadsheet. So all that you really need to do is make sure that the columns that you have here in your spreadsheet are in the same order as they are in WinStack. Uh, another way, uh, maybe some of you are tenant reps and you're out there walking buildings. You can just put all that tenant information quickly into an Excel spreadsheet and then just pop that into WinStack. Now, th so that's the second way of getting your tenant information into WinStack. Another way, I'm just going to create a new file over here. No, I don't want to save this. 
Another way to do it is to import data that has been exported from another system. Uh, and maybe that data is in a tab delimited or a comma separated value file. Just like in Excel, you do have the ability to save your data as what's called a CSV file or text file. So uh, what you would do to actually import the data is click on File. You want to Import. We want to import the tenant data. And that um, WinStack needs to know or have been told ahead of time what the data looks like, what the format of the data is that is going to be presented to it. And that's done in what's called an import definition file. And that's beyond the, the scope of our class right now, but um, it's something that uh, we could probably spend about five or ten minutes with you at uh, the most and get you very familiar on what to do. So I'm going to select uh, this particular template um, and then I'm going to click OK. It's now prompting me for the name of the CSV file that contains my tenant information. I'm just going to grab this file. And boom, it just loads all the information. Notice that those tenants now that had the name of vacant have that little frowny face. Again, it's just come over here to building. And we'll call this uh, import towers. Actually, let me just and here's my stacking plan. Same idea as what we had before, but just a different way of uh, inputting that information. <clears throat> Again, rather than manually typing it in or copy pasting it from Excel, basically I just imported the data from another uh, system. Okay. Another way of doing it is some of you are using Argus, which is an excellent lease-by-lease -lease analysis system. And you have the ability with an Argus to export the tenant information out to what's called an REXML file. So if you've done that, let's just start a brand new spreadsheet. I'm going to click on New. All right, I'm going to save this. I'm at a blank spreadsheet right now. You click on File. I want to import. I want to import using this REXML file format. Notice that these files have an extension of XML, so I can just click on the, the file that I want. And it's imported right into WinStack. Now, while you do have the ability within Argus to input the actual floor number, probably uh, uh, many of you aren't doing it that way, so you can just manually put in the floor number of, uh, the, uh, of the tenants once you have that information within WinStack. In some cases also, some of the tenants that you have might exist on numerous floors, in which case um, we can do some editing with this data. Uh, in this particular case, Cigna is probably on several different floors. So what I can do is replicate this tenant several times. I'm going to just change the square footage. Let's assume it's uh, 20,000 square feet. And then what I want to do is replicate. I'm uh, left-clicking on 18, right-clicking, indicate I want to do an add. I'm going to insert I'm going to do a copy-paste, and I want five copies of uh, this particular tenant. If I click OK, then it has given me five more copies of the, the tenant. And let's just, I'm just going to type in um, uh, the floor numbers. And we'll just um, just do this. Obviously, we'd want to change the suite number as well. Okay, come over here to building. Give it a name. We'll call this um, Argus uh, Tower.
the reason is you typically would not have to uh, hide these particular floors so the system does it automatically um, I have a default that does show any uh, vacant floors right now I'm going to click OK come over here to print preview and here's my stacking plan notice that uh, these tenants are white because I don't have any uh, color coding instructions for year 2007 okay so that's the various ways of uh, getting your data into WinStack either you could manually type it in you could copy paste the data from um, from Excel you could import data that's uh, maybe in a comma separated value or a tab delimited format or if you're using Argus you have the ability to uh, import a, an Argus REXML file. Now we talked about some of the uh, commands that are available for manipulating your tenants. I'm just going to left click on ACE over here. Uh, we talked about adding a tenant or adding several copies of him. Uh, you can delete a tenant. If I want to delete this tenant, I can just click on delete. And then uh, we're given the option to do it. Okay, and the tenant's gone. I can uh, delete multiple tenants. I can uh, either come up with a range and then right click to delete this range or I can just highlight. I'm pressing the control key and I'm just uh, clicking on various tenants that I might want to delete right click and delete it and they're gone. You have the ability to move tenants around. Uh, if I want to move um, these tenants that I just highlighted and move them under uh, the Cigna expansion over here for whatever strange reason then I'd highlight the, the tenants that I want and then there's a move option or a move command up here on the toolbar once I cl left click on move row notice that my cursor now becomes uh, looks like a, a beer mug I can just move the cursor down so that the handle if you will the little arrow there uh, is between uh, the numbers like 20 and 21 if I left click then it just moves all those tennis that I had highlighted down to that particular section. Okay, so you do have the ability to delete tenants, add them, uh, we could uh, copy paste, uh, you do have the ability to move them around. You can even sort the tenants by whatever criteria that you want. Uh, if we want to sort our tenant name or tenants by tenant name then you just left click on tenant name or right click and indicates sort by and it's just going to sort them alphabetically. If you want to sort the, the tenants um, by floor number and then again just uh, click on floor number, right click and sort. Okay now it really doesn't make any uh, difference to WinStack you know, whether uh, the floors are uh, in a sequence like this or whatever you want. Um, once you click on print preview the system is just going to assign all the tenants that are on the first floor to floor number one and so on. Okay? Now in addition to being able to work with the rows you do have the ability to move these columns around as well. If I, you know, maybe I don't really want to be concerned with my start date um, I can left click on start, right click and indicate that I want to rearrange uh, these tenants or these, uh, not the tenants but uh, the columns. So I'm going to click on arrange and here you're presented with a, a window where I can left click on uh, something I want to change and then I'm holding the left mouse key down and then I'm just moving it up and down. Okay, so if I want to I'll move it to a different location. Now start date is you know further down. Uh, if I want my floor number to be on the left of the tenant name then I can highlight the floor number and move it up. Notice also that I can um, highlight a particular item. Uh, let's assume it's going to be the suite number. 
and then I can press the control key and then the up and down keys to move it around. So I'm pressing control and then the up arrow to move suite up so it's uh, in front of the tenant name. So if I click OK, now uh, the spreadsheet columns have been put into a different order where I have the floor number first, suite, tenant name, and so on. So you're not locked into um, having the original order of um, columns uh, that you have when you first open up uh, WinStack. You can create your own order that you want and then you'd want to keep this for other purposes. So you can come over here to File, Save Column Template, and I want to call this default number 5. And we'll call it the default 5. And you'll see what I'm doing here. I'm going to not, I don't want to use this as my real, real default, so I'm going to click OK. So if I were to create a brand new spreadsheet and I want it to be in this particular format, then I can click on New. No, I don't want to save these tenants. I want to use Default 5 as my uh, column template. And here's the, the order of the, um, the columns. Now, uh, we got a little error over here indicating that the system needed a template with the name default 5, but that's uh, easy enough to uh, resolve. You know, I can just come over here, load one of my templates, we'll call this class uh, default 5, and then I can save this as default 5. Okay, so if I were to come out over here, we we'll do the same thing. Oops, it won't be the same. <laughs> yeah, I had a space over here for um, uh, in my file name, but anyway, I think you get the idea that um, once you set up the, the columns the way that you want, you want to just come over here to File, Save Column Template, and you're all set to go. Let's go back to one of these files that we had uh, originally. There's some other things that um, I can just uh, quickly talk about. Notice as I was hitting the tab key, the cursor was going from left to right. I'm hitting the enter key right now and notice that the cursor is going down. You can control that uh, as you want. I'm going to click on spreadsheet. And we have an option down here for enter. Uh, the enter key does what? Uh, in this case, I have it traversing the rows. That's why it's going down. Uh, the tab key traverses the column, so I, I didn't want to replicate that, okay? But that's how you control that. You do have the ability also to freeze a column. Now, I don't really have enough columns here to make it worthwhile, but if you had additional columns or fields of uh, information for the tenants, then you do have the ability to scroll left and right uh, down here to the bottom, but if you wanted to freeze a particular column so that you'd always see maybe the tenant name and the suite number, you would just highlight the, the column that you want to freeze, click on spreadsheet, and then click on freeze column. Okay, in which case, if you were scrolling left and right, everything to the left of, uh, in this case, suite number would remain the same. Other things that can be done with the, the WinStack system I'm going to go back to the print preview. Now notice in this particular um, stacking plan, I have a I have a, a logo for my uh, building, you know, for the our company, as well as a picture of the the building. Also, I've shaped this stacking plan so it sort of mimics the building, and you can do that uh, very easily by coming over here to building configure. And there's a column here called Floor Area. Whereas Area Spaces has been automatically computed by WinStack and sums up the square footage of the tenants on the floor, this is something that you can manually input. And you can see if I scroll down, 
that um, we have square footage of 18,000 and 16,000 square feet, and that's why the building gets a little bit smaller here at the top. To so give you an idea, I could come out over here and, and maybe make the first floor 25,000 square feet. So now I have a footer on the first floor of the building. If I don't want it to be this way, I'm going to come back to configure chart. This is the heart of the formatting area. And there's something in the building section where right now I have auto maximum unchecked. If I check this, this is going to make all the floors the same size so that uh, the building can look like a big rectangle. So if I click OK, now the building looks like a big rectangle. If I want to shape it like the actual building, then I can come over here to configure chart, uncheck this, and now I have um, the building or the stacking plan looking pretty much like the, the building. Notice in this case it's center justified. I do have the ability to make it left justified. So everything is uh, slammed over here to the left hand side or right justified or back in the middle. You do have the ability to show elevators if you want. Uh, you would enter that information under Building Configure. So I'm coming over to Building Configure. We have something, an option or a button over here for elevators. You add the elevators. So I'm just going to click on Add Twice. Let's assume that we have two elevator banks, one that starts on the first floor and goes to the tenth floor. And we want the elevator to be green. And then it goes from the um, the ninth floor to the nineteenth floor, and let's assume that's going to be green as well. So I've entered this information into the uh, the building prologue or the building configure screen. If I click OK, no elevators because I haven't told WinStack to display the elevator. But I can come over here to configure chart. I'm in the building section again and I can just click on the button that says show elevators. I want those elevators to be on the left hand side of the stacking plan. Click OK. And here's my uh, stacking plan with uh, the elevators. If I want the elevators to be on the right hand side, I can come back to configure chart on the right hand side. Have it over here if I don't want the elevators at all. Just undo this and I don't have them. In the header section, we have the our, our logo and uh, a picture of the building. If I come to configure chart, that's in the header section. We have a logo section over here. And in this particular case, um, in my upper left-hand side, uh, I have the Winstack logo. I can choose a different uh, logo. Maybe I want a torch. And over on the right hand side, you know, um, I can have a picture of a building. I think that's the same building actually. If I click OK, here's my logo as a torch, and here's the picture of the, the building. Okay, if I don't want to see the building up here, then I can come back to configure chart and come over to logo and just indicate no, I don't want. In other words, undo the right logo. And again, if I want to print this now, then I can just click on the, the printer icon, print any particular um, <clears throat> printer that I want available, and go from there. Or I can put it out to an image and then bring that into uh, PowerPoint or into Excel. If I want to do it into Excel, then again, I can just uh, click on the um, the icon for putting it to the clipboard, click OK. I can get into Excel. We'll just create a brand new spreadsheet. Right click and paste it in. Notice that with the clipboard, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. 
that uh, uh, the font over here or the text information is very crisp and very easy to, to see. So, um, you know, if you are going to be exchanging this information uh, with other systems, just rest assured that, you know, it's very easy to be able to read uh, all this uh, information. Do any of you have any particular questions right now in using the WinStack system? You know, we have about five more minutes, and you know, I, I open up uh, in, uh, open up the floor to any questions that you might have. On the handout that we sent to you, that um, um, we have our email address. If you need uh, any support or have any questions, we also have the telephone number, so you could be calling us uh, uh, for support. That um, the, we have other versions of the Windows system available. What we've been going through is what's called the interactive version of WinStack. But we also have uh, a version that shows color-coded floor plans. We also have another version called WinStack Space View that is actually attached to a database. It could be a property management system or a lease management system. So we're just drawing the data from uh, that database and bringing it into WinStack. So uh, we've just been talking about the interactive version of WinStack today. And that uh, if nobody has any questions at this particular point, I'll give you one last time. This is just more of an overview to the WinStack system. We'll get into much more detail on Thursday with regard to these color coding instructions that we call queries and how to set up new colors, how to set up uh, ranges of colors for maybe square footage or the name of the tenant how to add more colors to uh, what's available in your palette, as well as then to control the actual formatting of the stacking plan to come up with uh, an image or format that, uh, that you want to use for all your buildings. OK, you've been a great class. If you don't have any questions, I'm just going to terminate over here. Uh, if you do want, uh, if you do have any questions, you can call us at 760. 434-2180 or the email address is ted, T -E -D, at winstack.com. Thanks a lot and bye-bye.